Into the Nexus is a production of AMove.TV. Bookmark AMove TV for other great video games and esports podcasts. Into the Nexus is sponsored by listeners like you via patreon.com slash ITN. Greetings and welcome back, everyone, to Into the Nexus, the podcast all about Heroes of the Storm. I'm Garrett Weinzerl, still a, a hair under the weather today. It seems like this show is going to bookend my illness, uh, but uh, with me as always, and uh, feeling perfectly fine, I'm sure, I'm speaking for him, as Kyle Ferguson. How you doing, buddy? I'm well, thank you. <laughs> I'm glad you're better. Um, I'm better-ish. I'm better-ish. Yeah. So today is the first day that I could kind of breathe and then realized how tired I was because I haven't been sleeping as a result of the fact that I haven't been able to breathe. Sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. It'll happen. Yeah, it's fun. I missed all the podcasts this week except for this one, so this is it. This is the podcast that I was on just as I started to not feel all that great, and uh, now I'm going to be on it right at the tail end of whatever the hell hit me. I blame, well, I hate- I blame children. I, I, I was hanging out with children, and it doesn't happen very often, uh, because very few of... Actually, I only have one group of friends that uh, have children. I went and saw them. Uh, I think uh, those uh, mobile Petri dishes may have gotten me ill. Sure, sure. They do like the, hey, look at this, and then cough in your face. So kids are, <laughs> kids are a, a fascinating breed of human being. Uh, but you made it to the important show. I mean, really, let's get right down to it. The land of classics if you will the promised land perhaps promised land of classics yes what are you talking no. about are we talking about like uh like acdc um and like leonard skinnerd like that kind of classics or 90s rock is ending up on classic rock and making me feel old what, 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 mm. what are we doing here no i'm talking about that that game from your your childhood garrett that game of yesteryear Heroes of the Storm. Ah, uh, yes, that old gem that I've only been, you know, I, I was uh, I was the ripe young age of, how old were we when this started the Tech Alpha? 29? Yeah, was well, a good four years 20? of serious play here. So. All right, so let's see. We've done roughly 20, 250 episodes. That's roughly five years, actually. So wait, hold on, hold the phone. Uh, yeah, I guess 28. 28 is about yeah. right. Yeah. 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 Okay, we're doing math live. Yeah, I mean, it's when I think of retro gaming, I think of Heroes of the Storm. But a child was I. <laughs> I guess you don't have to be young for it to be a classic. Um, but... This is a game that only exists in my memory as adult me, as the person I currently identify as. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't. I don't look back wistfully on Heroes of the Storm, except maybe Li Ming. Uh, being able to clear waves with Calamity, but more on that in a bit, because it still ain't coming back. Um, yeah, this, I don't look to, um, I don't look, I don't think of Heroes of the Storm and, and think of nostalgia. I mean, talk to me in a year after it's been a full year since the axing of HGC, and okay, I may start feeling a little nostalgia for the old days of HOTS, but I may even start feeling nostalgia for the days when I would never say HOTS because it made me think of Heart of the Swarm and I would get very mad. And I'm like, folks, they refer to it internally as heroes. Let's not call it HOTS, but people kept calling it HOTS anyway. So... Uh, still a mistake. Here we find ourselves. Um, if folks haven't read, like, one tweet of yours, they have no idea what we're talking about. No, no, in case you missed it entirely, there was a, a, a tidbit, a gem of a job listing that listed the classic esports director, the guy who's going to be uh, orchestrating all the upcoming esports for the classic games, such as, you know, Reforge and StarCraft II and Heroes of the Storm. So, uh, I mean, two things. One, that's hilarious to think of this game as classic. But two... I mean, it's a good thing that somebody's going to be having to think about esports for this game, right? That's what I'm. I mean, if StarCraft esports is doing just fine, we know that Warcraft Reforge is going to have some sort of resurgence. You got Kaldor and Grubby, you know, chomping on the bit 
ready to make it a thing if only for a time period as people refigure out the game rediscover it we don't have a lot of rts's in our life so of course even a remaster is going to have some sort of following and a lot of people might even play warcraft 3 for the very first time yeah so I'm, i I'm, say I'm, here's the storm is in good company okay I, w I will say i am less likely to believe in that particular hype train after uh, uh brood war or well starcraft one remastered that was a bit that was scandalous though right because that was the whole like oh man here it comes everyone's gonna abandon starcraft the broken husk sitting there on the hill and go back to the beautiful eloquent days of brood war and they didn't i just no. finished watching the first season of gsl this year it was amazing by the way you owe it to yourself to go and watch the finals if you don't watch anything else kyle and i would also just do some very light reading as to the results of mario over the past year so that you will understand the story going in although honestly i think tasis on artosis will bring you up to speed i'm excited for it it is on my on my bucket list Mm, your bucket. Wait, you're going to watch se the season one finals of GSL for 2019 before you die. That is your right. your your no. your bar too clear for watching it. To do list. To do list. Excuse me. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine, everyone. Thank so, you. I love you. I do love that idea though. Like I'll watch it before I die. <laughs> Can you put on the GSL for me, son? So Kyle and I will do our uh, will do the final episode of Starcast uh, from the retirement home that we both live in because we'll finally have convinced Kyle to retire to Florida. <laughs> How it goes? And we'll talk about Mario and Classic facing off. It'll be wonderful. Perfect. It'll be a good time. And maybe one person will still have that feed. Subscribe to. If everyone else isn't already getting podcasts from their brains. Yes, we'll, we'll download from our glasses <laughs> Heroes of the Storm on good old games on a private server <laughs> that we have launched, and we'll play ourselves a couple of matches before checking out. It'll be good. It'll be good. Computers will be considered retro at yeah. that point, much like a record player. It's a, it is a bright future, Kyle. And only For because sure. of there's, uh, buildings are basically built out of ads, because we will be in Blade Runner by that time. Yeah, there we go. We'll all know our names, scan our eyeballs as we walk by. Be good things. Good things. Um, well, seeing as that information of heroes being classified now as under classics uh, only came from a job posting and there's really nothing else, shall we move on to a massive patch uh, that will probably take the entire episode to get through? Right. Let's do that because uh, this classic game is still getting updates. And I'm going to use the only appropriate uh, variant of our news bumper for this, by the way. So everyone enjoy. We're on, boys! <laughs> Let's liven up this place! The moment is upon us. Yes, I'd mana tap that. Man attention, a word I've never said in my entire life, was, the, was a major uh, theme, shall we say, of the patch that dropped yesterday. Should we address the elephant in the room? Uh, that people are using this as a way to write off this patch and just gripe about things? That this got hopes up. That there was a very large patch on the horizon. And it ended up being man attention. Okay. All right. That's what I'm kind of talking about. I feel... Everyone's being a little disingenuous. Yes, there are no reworks here, right? There's no new hero. There's not a ram as a mode, even though I don't want it, but everyone else does. Um, this is still a very large patch in terms of how many talents and heroes were adjusted outside of just mana changes. Like if it you, all came down to a single post in the AMA by Daybringer, who said that he was very impressed by the size of the patch that he saw somebody else working on. Okay, why were we hyped about that? Well, it's, That was one person's was, passing comment. Right, to be one of the biggest patches in history, in the history of the game, which led to a bit of a snowball effect in the community to people believing things from both Chen and Tassadar on the way next week. It's going to happen. Finally, those two reworks we've really been hinting out for a long time. It was part of the designer AMA, so... There was a little bit like maybe this would be a huge skin pack, Ragnaros, the amount of work it takes to make him a skin. This might be the delivery of that promise. 
or there's the people who just ran to grab that ball and ran for the hills and said, finally, I'm going to be able to carry, and here is the storm, because the entire game is going to be reworked into a classic MOBA sense. You ran real far with that. Uh, oh, I didn't. Uh, I wasn't straw me. man that we're building. I-, I watched him in binoculars. I'm like, where's he going? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I think this is fine. Okay, I, I guess... I, th- so the words biggest patch in the history of the game were uttered? Oh. Uh, Did I forget about this? Daybringer. Okay. We have been trying to heavily bolster the balance patches, keeping the game feeling fresh and ever-changing. Adam has done a great job spearheading this endeavor, and I believe the next one to be the largest in the game's history. Okay, all right, fair. That's maybe a little disingenuous. Because, yes, bullet points, probably. This probably is the biggest patch in history. Interesting changes? No. No. There are many, I think, interesting changes. Uh, But that's... No. No. (laughs) Who's Adam? That's, I mean, let's blame Adam. We don't know him yet. (laughs) We haven't really met who Adam is. So, yeah. Back about yeah, it. Whatever, whatever. Anyway, let's talk about man attention and, and why it was a focus of this patch. I'm not going to read the entire developer comment, but I think the most important part of this comment is they say that mana should be a meaningful part of the game, particularly in the early stages when wave clear is at a high pre- higher premium. We believe that as the game progressive, mana attention should become less important as heroes gain more base mana and the game's focus shifts to team fighting. Man attention doesn't have to be the same for every hero, but every hero should feel it to some degree. Otherwise, it serves no purpose. Uh, and then they go on that they say that they like that some talents heavily mitigate mana tension, uh, which I would assume they would like that because they designed it and put it in the game on purpose. Um, and so this has led to, if you have just p- made a passing glance at these patch notes, you will have noticed that many heroes and many heroes' abilities have had their mana adjusted. Uh, and we're not going to mention all of it here because we would put you to sleep. There's so many m- mana up and down changes here. Uh, but I'll give the an example of the one I'm probably the most excited about is that Frozen Tempest for Arthas has had the mana cost of it reduced by 14%. That's lovely. I have always had crazy anxiety about keeping that aura on any longer than I had to because of how much mana it drained. Well, and there is the Frozen Waste talent at 4, which reduces the mana cost of keeping your Frozen Tempest active, but it also gives you an extra period of slow for 1.5 seconds, to enemy heroes so that was a reason to complete that quest and work on it but really in our heads perhaps we were overvaluing this one particular quest talent because it was reducing the mana cost and otherwise you'd simply be out of mana on arthas so this allows more pick diversity now at four which is pretty cool if you're one of those icy talons players one of those death lord death coil players and that has now opened up that avenue it's um, a it's a great topic. I think this is a really cool thing to focus in on. Uh, not listed here is all the mages. Most of the heroes that you assume are doing the lane clear, like Nazebo. Nazebo's fine. And I think he's a great example of this philosophy at play and what they want to work into other heroes. Nazebo, in the early game, you got to be a little careful. You know, maybe you're doing a multi-soak and you're just you're winning. You're getting all the orbs. You're fine. Well, you're not winning those lanes. You don't get your orbs. You're really bad at man until you hit four again. And you might, depending on the map, might not want to do regen as your pick there. You might want to go for a bigger health pool, mana pool. You might want to get a little weirder than that, doing a spider build or something. He is well designed in the sphere that as the game goes on, mana stops being such an important part of Nazebo, and he starts joining team fights. So I like this a lot. There is now a counterplay option in your enemy mismanaging their mana. You're not only winning the lane through health and forcing them out, they're a bad player and cast their spells poorly. You should win that lane and they'll have to retreat while you get XP. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's a nice nuanced way to kind of look at the way mana plays into the overall balance of the game and also leaks into talent diversity in a certain way, on certain heroes anyway. So let's kind of list the heroes that had any sort of, there's tons of them, there's tons of changes, like Uther lost uh, 11 
0.1% of his mana cost on his holy light. All right. It's not lane clear related. I, you know, that helps. No, I've but it's freaking quality of life related. I mean, have you yeah, played yeah. Uther recently? Yeah, he's a little mana hungry, and you got to go that level one talent. Yeah, I, I, it's probably incorrect. You know what? In fact, I can say it is incorrect. But I, I, in my brain, I always had mana inefficient heroes filed away as that's old school. Like if a hero has mm. is has issues with mana in the early game, it's an older hero. And I think of heroes like Uther or Nazebo if he's not winning lanes. Um, although, been on a Rexar tear lately. It's news to absolutely no one. Had a lot of vis- mana issues on Rexar. Uh, and then that's a lane clear hero. That's a newer hero in the grand uh, scheme of the history of this game. So it wasn't just an old hero uh, issue. But my God, when I think of old heroes, I think of Uther. And when I think of Uther, I think of mana inefficiency. Right. It's a very classic MOBA design philosophy to have an ability, let's say, that you spend your mana pool and deal that much damage. And then you hearth on home like, oh spent it didn't get the kill it's over let that's a mage for you and i feel like heroes has worked really hard to make sure there's active things to do that you can maintain yourself on the map but we've also had characters like phoenix come in who is you know cooldown based and that can throw these things a little awry so what they're trying to do with characters like arthas here zul curse strikes imperious uh, solarian's flare chromie's dragon breath Grey main swipe, Zuljin's grievous throw is allow you to cast those in a lane clear situation without just running out of mana and then returning to the fight and participating. And mana shouldn't matter at a certain point when we reach that end game. The characters that have been reined in from their lane clear are Diablo, Garrosh, Stitches, Asmo, Dan, uh, Rainer, and Hanzo. And all these characters have had increases in their mana costs. So it is now more expensive for Asmodan to cast Global Annihilation by 15% so that he is purposely running out of ma- mana if he is poorly lane clearing. What hero from that list do you think I want to harp on for personal vendetta reasons? Rainer? No, Diablo. Oh, okay. He's oh, even okay, worse. He's a bad he hero and they made him worse. Stop playing Diablo. His lane clear is now 15% more expensive. And... He will suffer and run out of mana at times, particularly if you're doing a flame stomp build. And he's not as good as he once was. I thought I was in the clear this week. It wasn't seeing any Diablo picks. And then uh, got one on my team. And guess what? Lost that game. <laughs> yeah, I've had some I've had some losses with Diablos. Lots of Illidans over the past two weeks, too. And they're not they're not rocking it for me. So I, I've got my select characters. I'm a little down on at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just, I think I'm, at this at this point, I'm just assuming I'm going to go to my grave yelling at people for picking Diablo. So there's lots of other changes like this. They are very unique, which is why I think Daybringer was so impressed by Adam's work. This isn't 15 across the board. These are 28% for things like Garrosh's Groundbreaker. We're looking at Hanzo receiving a mana cost increase of 28% on Stormbow and 22% on Scatter Arrow. I mean, Hanzo really taken a huge hit to the amount of mana he's going to be spending to do his efficient lane clear yeah and, and, then, and that's something i look at going oh here's a new hero being brought in to line with older heroes yeah. in terms of their mana efficiency and, and wave clear which you could say maybe a lot of this is hey props to malfurion malfurion you know mana giver is gonna make a bit of a comeback here he already is in my personal games but i think a lot i'm just seeing great support diversity because of the role selection opportunities you declare your support i am now comfortable with you picking all sorts of things it it is it's starting to make me think of because i start to run away. this is what i'm going to take and run away with probably too far is that if this continues malfurion becomes a premium he's really the only hero that can do that can we get a mana restoration on some other type of supportish hero please that'd be interesting i think it'd work well on i don't want to empower lucio but I do think, you know, it's the beat. I'm not healed by your beat. I am soothed by it. But I guess his <laughs> beats actually do heal. They're magical. They, they're, they're technology. Well, if he's playing the right beats. Right. Otherwise, you're moving faster, which I guess makes sense. Uh, Anna. Uh, oh, wait. No, never mind. Alex Straza. Wrong. Has end. a rather long quest for her W, Circle of Life, that spawns an orb. There's some mana for you. Okay. Okay. It's not as much as uh, 
<laughs> it's 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 not as much as uh, as what Malfurion's giving you, but I guess if there were enough people around, the orb would spread itself. Yeah. So there's something to be found in that. And it is keeping with the big AOE healing of Alex Straza. So, okay, I like it. I like it. I like what you're putting down. I like what yeah. you're putting down. But you know what else I like, Kyle? Mm. Buffs. Buffs are good. Buffs are good. We got a few buffs with this patch. One is I hesitant to put under buffs. It like could go under, you know, underpowered talent changes. But I'm just going to call it a buff because I love me some Tormented Souls on Malthiel. It's when he first launched, that's what I was leaning on. Loved it. And then uh, we all found it was just not really the way to go. Um, but they added additional functionality to Tormented Souls. So now when Tormented Souls is cast and it expires, it resets the cooldown of Wraith Strike. And in All the, right. Yeah, the dev comments are basically like, we want to make it more interesting, but we don't just want to add healing armor or lifesteal because it's just add, in their words, uh, that simply add more power to the heroic. He is a bruiser, so that wouldn't be completely out of the question, but it would change him drastically when it comes to 10 because right now you kind of have damage abilities. Last rights is to kill a guy. Tormented Souls is to hurt a whole bunch of people and used to have some armor tied to it. And they since, you know, pulled back on that because it was just running away with the whole gig. So now what they've done is allowed Tormented Souls to, well, recast on your selection, instant cooldown, your rate strike. So what this means is, and if in a, in a perfect world, let's say you're going to engage, you're, you're, you're floating over towards the enemy team and you shoot out, you shoot out your death shroud and you get a mark on that main tank, let's say. So you teleport onto him. Bam, pop your tremendous souls, storming souls, and you start walking into the back line. Now you're not killing that tank. You want to get it on everybody. So you're just spreading the mark around and you're going deep and you're getting in there and then it ends. And now you have another wraith strike to teleport back onto that tank now that you're so deep to get yourself readjusted back to your team you know how magical would that be if illidan went on the back line and then magically teleported back to the team when it was over with a perfect cooldown that'd be pretty freaking sweet it's a cool idea so there's also a talent called mortality at 16 that deals six percent hero maximum health so hey, you can get yourself an 18 percent there you teleport in on the tank activate get a instant refresh activate and when it ends you activate again there is not time in Tormented Souls, which lasts four seconds for a five-second cooldown of Wraith Strike. So you can't get to the 24% in that case. You're only going to get three casts on this Engage style. Yeah, so that's what I like about it. That being said, now that we've said all that, I'm not sure it's still enough to pull me away from Last Rites. I'd say Last Rites is still the go-to pick, getting amazing picks. If they're tanks or if they're Fleeing Hanzos, they're still amazing. I would say that Tormented Souls, though, if I early picked Malfield going into a Nubarak, or maybe even Brightwing, someone with a spell shield and someone who can actually cover a Last Rites. Because we can't forget, Last Rites is 50% of missing health. It is not pure damage like a Leoric Hand or a Giant Killer. It is based on missing health and then applies spell damage. So if they have spell armor, Last Rites can be very easily countered. And you're not going to get that last hit you want to give yourself cooldown reduction. Yeah. Also just kind of plays into the kind of the trend of like I, it, uh, well, the trend. I don't want to just say this is the meta, but like we've moved on to Pyroblast with Kael'thas. We, we see yeah, this, really the, the reign of Anubarak and Cocoon. It's there's so, the fights in this game right now. Uh, in, and stop me if this isn't your experience, but they seem so knocked down, drag out. Like a lot of these games and these fights are, are they become so close in who comes out the victor that being able to just remove someone from the fight or guarantee at least you get one kill becomes very important. And I think that's why you see things like Cocoon and Pyroblast and Last Rites uh, seeing such high pick rates. And do you know who could maybe get a little bit bit of a buff and then already has an ability that removes one, if not five heroes from the battlefield is that zagara it is <laughs> it is kyle 
I love the way you said that. Yes. Uh, I, also, I too have been on the pyroblast chain. <clears throat> also, just need some damn mana help if you're not going to go Nidus and didn't receive any with this patch. Yeah, she wasn't adjusted. Lots of heroes we didn't talk about here, not directly tied to lane clear, so they're a little off the beaten path of philosophy, like Singularity Spike on Zeratul lost 13% of its mana cost. There's all sorts of changes like this that you can read for yourself that don't fit into pretty little patterns. But I do think your idea about team fights admits, uh, meets the pattern exactly. It's exactly what's happening. It's what they built the 2018 winter update to do. Fights are close. And even if you're not going to get that Falstad kill, scaring him off for 10 seconds with a pyroblast while he runs around in circles is not a bad idea because you're removing someone from that battle. And Very good point. Yeah, and I think that uh, fights are really long, though. So maybe Tormented Souls, because the fights are long and close, maybe it does have a spot. I mean, right now, I'm, I'm, I'm just heading straight over. I want to see what the level 20 augment her reaper of souls is increase tormented souls duration by two seconds while tormented souls is active hero takedowns refresh the duration hey all right that's that's your 24 percent. that's an extra rate strike in there two extra seconds so actually in this cute little build i've invented in my head 24 percent on a tank and we're not talking the base damage of your auto attack or your rate strike yeah all right, that's yeah. kind of cute. And 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 yeah, so if you think about that and you think of the refresh on kills and this Wraith Strike functionality that's been added to Romance of Souls, I mean, it just makes Malthiel at least a tempting cleanup hero. But are you are you taking him for level 20 cleanup? Probably are you not. going to skip in this current meta, no one can stop death, which is the instant res? Right. Because you might be the one that catches my Pyroblast. Exactly. And, and you know what? If I'm a Malthiel, probably I probably am. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, an interesting change nonetheless. I, uh, Ray Strike is, uh, and the way it functions, I love it. It's uh, one of my favorite movement abilities. I mean, death actually teleports behind you. It's so sickeningly anime, you have to love it. A cool, cool factor to the max, Scott. Yeah, yeah. And I like, this is a great great change it's 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 handsome it's sexy way to empower tormented souls which is the opposite of how i've felt in the past week with all of the <laughs> fluids leaving my face well, well the, you know medical science has only gone so far we can only give you armor <laughs> you know regen some health can't make me feel sexy no no that's what haircuts and fashion are for uh exactly. deckard is up next as far as buffs uh and uh, i mean they're, they're tying it in a nutshell base buffs the healing potion and haraja cube i am here for this healing potions healing amount went from 255 to 270 that is almost a six percent increase to what was already a really big heal this is already a, a noticeable healing you can have multiple of them multiple of them out at the same time and if They're you have, trying to work him back in. If you have good, I think they've. I think they've achieved it. Like I know, typically, into the Nexus's brand is we 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 mull it over. We talk about the possible outcomes. We say it's always difficult to you know see the day after, which this is the case. the 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 patch is barely twenty four hours old at the point of re recording this episode. Uh, but deck it feels really good. <laughs> and on top of that, the cooldown was reduced on Haraja Cube, two seconds off. I want Ruby to be a thing. I think it's a really neat spell to empower your Haraja cube to just poop a whole bunch of little potions all over the battlefield that your Malthiel might be swarming around in. And I hope this brings that play style into the forefront. Right now, our Deckard, with these changes, if his healing is efficient, he's not having mana issues anymore, all these things come to pass, we're still probably going to play Deckard as the root machine. And that room machine deals decent damage. It really does to heroes. And that's why it's a number one. Yeah. I, uh, I dig it. I, 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 I would recommend taking Decker. The, the healing is big right now. Um, obviously, I think you're right. I mean, the roots, it's still such a core part of his kit that you're going to need to be able to uh, actually do something on the back of him landing a root. So it is, I think, still a draft dependent hero. But I like these changes. Right, there's always that that game you've played on Deckard where you've got a, let's go Diablo on your team, they have a Thrall on their team, and you root them both, 
Well, now they're just standing next to each other, hitting each other, and Thrall's winning that fight because they're both hitting each other, and nothing happens. You gotta have some follow up. Yeah. Um, and so, as someone who hasn't really been messing with Chromie too much in the wake of her rework, what's going on with this? Because so many talents have been messed with. Yeah, this is massive. What they're doing with Chromie is reducing the mana cost of Dragon's Breath. Ties directly into our mana philosophy about lane clear. Dragon's Breath is kind of your main bread and butter there. Also, that siege damage you might be squeezing out from it is pretty nice. They're increasing her overall damage. Basic attack is up. Sandblast damage is up considerably, 35 points. And Dragon Breath damage is up as well. Cooldown is reduced. So we're going to see a more spammy, more dangerous Chromie to help her win rate out, basically. But what you're really going to feel if you've been playing the new Chromie is the lack of mana regen. So you might be a little more mana efficient. You might be a little more hard hitting. But there were some talents in here. Time Walker's Pursuit being one no longer gives any mana regeneration upon quest completion. Well, the early game is when you really needed that. So that hurts a little bit, but it was a quest. You had to build to it. You didn't get it that early. The real big hit for those who have been enjoying modern Chromie is the removal of mana regeneration from Gnome Speed Ahead, which just made you have infinite mana. It was, it was silly. There were other cute talents at 11, Chromie's 13, that did okay. But this thing just made you not have a care in the world about mana. And if you're doing something like a rewind build, where you get cooldown reductions, you could go out of mana. And you're going to now. And you're going to have to make those educated caster choices. Okay. I've seen a lot of Chromies lamenting uh, the Blessing of the Bronze change. Yeah. Because this yeah, is... Like, they drug it out back and, and shot it. <laughs> well, okay. So it was extremely cool. It was also up against Piercing Sands, which would make your own Chromie play amazing, particularly if you were in one of these prolonged Cursed Hollow sort of corridor battles. So Blessing of the Bronze, everybody had it. It was that passive movement speed and ability cooldown to yeah. everyone on your team. 10% movement, 30% recharge or faster recharge on basic abilities as long as Chromie's alive to your whole team yeah. all the time. And now they've made it inactivatable. It's on a 90 second cooldown. It only lasts eight seconds. And yes, they gave a minor buff to basic ability recharge rate and they doubled the movement speed that you get during this. But God, we just went from an aura that affected everyone on your team map wide for as long as your hero it just survives down to an eight second window. It's, it's a bit of a hit. They wanted counterplay to be available. In my own experience, everyone wanted to see Breathing, Blessing of the Bronze on the talent sheet. Nobody really could identify if it was doing well or not. And you as the Chromie would often sit there with losing teammates and go, oh, I should have gone piercing sands. I'm not really sure that this is even working. So I'm for it being empowered. In fact, I wish they had, instead of doing this cooldown thing, they had gone the Alex Straza route because it would have just been cute. She's got her Blessing of the Red that you kind of mark a target, giving them 500 bonus health. It's great. It's, it's, it's really solid. Why not do that with Chromie here? You mark a target. You say, no, Illidan doesn't need 30% faster cooldowns. We're just getting silly here. I'm going to put it on Jaina first. In 90 seconds, I'll put it on Illidan. Okay. I mean, I'm not sad to see you go. I'm just, I'm gonna, I know I'm gonna, I'm gonna whine about Rexar later, so I'm, I'm trying to, trying to, trying to make sure the Chromies have somewhere to whine too. Yeah, yeah we're with you, Chromies. You know, I'm, st I'm, I'm not sad to see it go on, but I'm trying to be fair. <laughs> I mean, I'm not meeting old Chromies halfway here. I, I, I didn't like your Chromies. I'm sorry. I think piercing through multi walls, multi lanes, and hitting me at a well was silly. We're, we were and, doing so well, Kyle. We were. We were getting goodwill with the Chromies, and now you're just undoing it. Oh, well, I, I just want everyone to know that I like new Chromie, and I still like her. So. Uh, okay. All right. I'm still on their side, but they're, that's we're, we're in the same yard having a barbecue here and commiserating. There's a whole block down the street where they're still mourning about old Chromie, and I can't meet you halfway. <laughs> I think they're at the barbecue, and this is essentially bringing up politics. Oh, uh, well, poor move. Poor move. <laughs> You were the one who brought it up. Damn. All right. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's move into underpick talent. Uh, 
adjustments because that uh, made up of uh, almost as large of a portion of these uh, balance changes as the mana tension changes. Uh, first up, Dahaka. Like this is all underpicked talent buffs that we're seeing across the board on Dahaka. Um, the, the the developer comments said, "Hey, we're just taking a look at his less popular talents, making some changes." So first up is Enduring Swarm. Uh, they gave it additional functionality. This is the Dark Swarm grants you 50 spell power while active ability. Uh, the additional functionality is that it increases the duration of Dark Swarm by half uh, half a second. Um, which my question is, would you pick this over eventually having 40 more health regen and 10 more max essence through the tissue regeneration, which is currently the most popular level one talent? There's been a Dark Swarm build on... The Haka senses inception. It's always behind. It, it's kind of the Blaze problem, right? Blaze has some really cute late game talent diversity options for like spell armor and shielding, but you just pick the aggressive talent so you win more. And so, why at level one would you say, oh man, I'm going to die real hard to this enemy spellcaster? I better. I better plan to be bad. Uh, yeah. Uh, deciding your armor that early on has always perplexed me to a certain degree. I mean, I know block exists that early on on so many warriors, but um, spell armor is something we usually see ourselves doubling down on significantly later in the talent pool. Yeah. All right. Just tree pool. Wood. It's kind of all over. This is, very much a tree but um yeah i don't i don't see this putting up a serious fight against tissue regeneration the lurker strain augment is a little cute reduce the cooldown of burrow i think that one who collects and hero stalker is an awesome way to continue empowering your essence collection on your selection at one so there is now a build that if you miss your level one you don't have then have to feel like oh man my level four pick is now awful and not going to empower what I did at one. And you have Lurker Strain here. Maybe there's like a beginner Dahaka build here where you're not managing your abilities as well. You're more resilient rather than on the recovery end, which takes some pre-planning with Essence. So that's all pretty good adaptation. Cooldown reduced by 20 seconds. He's got a he's got a high skill floor. And I mainly say that too, just because he's clunky on purpose so that he can't land maximum drags and managing your global is a tradition at this point. You, you're going to get a lot of flack for being in the wrong place at the wrong time. If you dig poorly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's just that um, this, as with so many of these underpicked talent changes, I just can't help but compare it to the talents that are currently popular. And I just don't think any of this, really goes far enough. I mean, especially adaptation. I mean, yeah, they shaved 20 seconds off the cooldown. This brings it down into that coveted one minute cooldown place where we like so many of our heroics to be. But do you want it more than a silence? Probably not. And, 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 that, and that silence works exactly into what we've been talking about, which is these get the picks, figure out this very balanced fight. You could be missing half all of your buildings but the game can still come down to one big fight. And if you pick the right yep. combo of talents and the right 20, you're going to win out. So, so this takes Burrow, for example, from 20 seconds down to 16 second cooldown. That's not that insane, but you can see why with that adaptation being on there and you usually do the absorb, absorb, absorb. Oh no, Burrow. Ah, big heal, pop back up, full health, freak everybody out. They just messed up all their spells kind of business. Yeah, yeah. So, interested to see if I'm wrong, but I I wouldn't assume to see Dahaka is suddenly building very differently. No, no. I think there's a there's a cute augment on thirteen now as well. So they're they're empowering a build for it. Yeah, thirteen's interesting. Um, so yeah, because I mean, Primal Swarm is the most popular at that level. But Primal Rage also has a pretty healthy pick rate and a higher win rate than Primal Swarm. So Ferocious Stalker, it still has a lot to contend with. Yeah. Because it's already yeah, a level where 
Yeah, we were, we were seeing picks between at least two of the three talents, and they both had pretty good win rates. Um, I, I still, at this stage, applaud them for adding on something extra rather than saying, spell armor is now 55, an arbitrary number that won't matter too much. Sure, putting an extra 0.5 seconds on all those dark swarms that you're going to do over the entire game, that'll add up. Oh, absolutely. Um, so I know you were off the tank train and maybe the warrior, well, bruiser train for a bit there. Are you still not really playing those heroes at the moment? Yeah, it's been Kale Foss nonstop this week. Again, uh, Nazebo, Jaina, if it doesn't come to that. I have I have hit my limit on the easy Kale Foss build, which is healthy, you know? We climbed up to the promotion match of Plat 1. What what do you consider the easy Kale Foss build? The one where you do the full-blown uh, living bomb stuff. So you're oh, going to okay. do your level 7, Sun King's Fury, spread damage, you're going to go 13 with Vision Bomb for Explosion Radius okay. because mistakes so are happening a lot of Gotcha. So a lot of Verdant Sphere <laughs> talents. Exactly. Yeah, you're going to be empowering and just going... Boo, boo, boo. So, so your Verdant Sphere's talents are still really cute, and I take them from time to time based on my healer, but it's time for me to transfer back to Pyromaniac, which has cooldown reductions mm -hmm. instead of spread area. And that'll basically be my build now moving into Diamond. Yeah, I you know... We we saw, um, I think it was our last patron banana that we were having issues with against kale fosses. Um, yeah. And, you know, I thought it was just because we were in Rainbow League and we were slamming all our, our leagues together and who knows what would be going on there. Um, but uh, this this past week, I've been playing with a lot of, uh, mostly uh, against platinum players and some diamonds, and it's still a major issue getting out of the bombs. And I think to a certain degree, it's just the meta we find ourselves in. There's a lot of clump, and we, we talked about it last week, uh, but I don't think I was really <laughs> just respecting the fact that, like, there's only so much you can do. Like, with the prevalence of Rexar right now, that bear is bringing bomb pla bombs places. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, there's just a lot of elbow rubbing, and with that comes bomb spreading. Well, and things like Sun King's Fury, 35% uh, more damage that spreads to heroes. So you're fighting that Anubarak. Well, don't put it on Anubarak. Put it on his beetle right next to him, and it'll explode onto him and deal more damage. And usually the beetle will wander off somewhere that people aren't watching. Uh, you can do a little lane trick where you throw it on a minion, then give a little flame strike on that minion. It dies in, you know, instantly there, explodes, and spreads this around. So there's lots of little tricks like that that I've been taking advantage of to punish the mixing of our current leagues due to the placement system. And I'm very happy to say that I am, I'm climbing and it's great. And I can now go back to Pyromaniac because I require better, longer fights rather than quick, they spread all living bombs, I win fights. Mm. So I, to answer I, your I question in, in the long form, I haven't been on Imperius. <laughs> uh, I tried him. He is He's a deep, uh, deep diver. I really love him alongside Kerrigan still. I think he's pretty good alongside Arthas. You don't want to be really the frame up of the CC. I think he's great along Butcher too. I'm talking about engage assassins here. Mm -hmm. If someone else makes the engage and you follow up, hot diggity. That is good stuff. I don't like him in main tank until 16. And the majority of his talents really take a long time to come online. So this change here is all about making him have earlier tank options, really, and increasing talent diversity. Uh, one of these is just being that consuming flame. There's no more quest to it, which is great and totally for the philosophy I want in this game, which is Murden, stop hitting me with random hammers when you're all by yourself at level one. You don't have given the axe. You're going to do minimal damage to my self-regenerating hero, and yet you stunned me. Well done. Grats to you. Nothing was going to happen. Oh, but you got a stack. Oh, no, I'm giving the game. Right. Imperius was shooting his flare into packs and not wanting to go solo lane because it was an option for him. It was silly. It, it, it was, it was, you could reach the first Alterac objective and he's still shooting random flares. We got rid of that. Awesome. I'm usually uh, just always happy to see quests go away. <laughs> so. For the most part, there's a couple yeah. of key ones. Like I think Nazebo is fine. Uh, I've, I've done a lot of work on that myself to actually farm up and learn to not panic when I see four people in a fight without me. There are 
Jaina's ice block is, is, is okay. You know, that's more of a personal preference thing because, oh, man, I just want it now. I feel like I'm always fighting. They ban Kael'thas and then go Garrosh. It, I don't know if those are related, but it's really dangerous. And I'm always Jaina wishing I had ice block five levels earlier. Mm, uh, same. Sam, I'm not good enough to get it super early. I usually end up getting it like post 13. Right. Well, then I end up blizzarding the stitches for like the whole early game. So, it, yeah, I'm that's what I don't do. I guess it's, it's probably something I should break myself of, kind of like you and Nazebo, and not panicking when people are in a team fight without you. Maybe I should yeah. just be blizzarding the stitches to get my ice block sooner, but it just seems like such a waste. I, it, there's a there's a hunter kind, of, and that's why I feel like the frostbolt build is really taken off the full i'm talking range i'm talking everything i'm talking icy talons like down the line skipping shields melee jaina was the way to play six months ago that was a lot of fun but we discovered that you're just damaging the wrong target for way too long now what? there's this really hunting q jaina that gets her stacks and is efficient in the early game well do you know what i saw yesterday man what did you say i saw solo tank uther divine shielding the jaina and just running in it was one of the. It was terrifying. Did it work? Almost. We won, but oh, that was a tough game. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It was. It was pretty nutty. That is. I mean, that's super cute. That is. <laughs> well, and they were. Um, it was Dragonshire, so I mean, there's bushes everywhere, and they were mm. sneaky. Like you would be just doing your normal mid business just sparring off against the person suddenly Uther Jaina out of the bush what just happened I've been hunted down by Jaina's and I grab an Uther in there and that's pretty dangerous yeah yeah it was I I got I also I mean I was a little nervous in the beginning because I was like the last time I saw a solo tank Uther things did not go well yeah but uh <laughs> yeah it didn't work this time it was fine we adjusted glad, we glad just, to hear it we stopped sitting too close to those damn bushes Solo Tank Uther, I think, has to go that Divine uh, Storm. It was it was cute. It was cute. But. You need that business on you. Uh, the, one, the, the real thing that will probably excite Imperious players about this update is that your level four, which you might already feel like, well, Battle Hunger is the place to go. Every time I remove one of my marks, I get 82 health. Unshakable Faith used to be that whenever you activated your molten armor and removed a root or slow you would gain health so it's kind of like a sonia talent very very few instances where imperious in full plate armor let's just talk about visually and zul's running up to the whole enemy team would be like oh, i'm gonna snag imperious like it's just it was dumb if you remove that root or that slow you would get healed now it still removes the root and slow but you get the heal anyway so you have this front end heal that you don't have to be in contact with anyone. You don't have to stay connected Artana style to remove that brand you put on them. You just can pop a pretty decent sized heal. And for those of you who were like me and enjoying something like Flash of Anger, that got a really nice buff as well. Yeah, okay. How do you feel about these Sukop changes? Because uh, they said the, the, the dev said their goal is to improve the pick and win rates of reactive ballista spores and pop and pustules i know you've been a pop and pustules fan for a long time i would like to believe so but sadly it just didn't work out most mm. of the time okay a super cool idea that detonating a weighted pustule with bio kill switch would cause it to explode in the area and cause a slow you're it just didn't bring home the bacon compared to something like fetid touch compared to low blow, which was bonus damage to heroes while they were in your silence. If they were low health or even spine launcher, because you're afraid to get in okay. melee against that. Heroes. All right. What if I moved it to 13 and made the damage bonus 150% instead of 100%. It's still up against virulent reaction, which is the mosh pit of Stukov's kit. It, it's mosh pit is not invincible. It's not the perfect talent. But, heck, it wins a game once in a while, and you got to have it. You know, I, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not poo-pooing, by the way, in this analogy on uh, stage dive. It's fine. It's fine. But there's always the chance. Death Metal is probably a better example. There's just a chance you're going to win on the back of it, and you can't give up that vibrant reaction. But they did take a 13 talent 
and put it at one. Yeah, reactive the, ballista spores. So this talent is was my original pick when the character first came out. It's 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 pretty neat. Taking damage that lowers you below fifty percent health, or when you're below fifty percent health on a fifteen second cooldown, instantly spreads a weighted pustule to all nearby heroes and resets the cooldown of bio kill switch. Hey, combo that with the pop and pustules and everyone exploding for bonus damage. That could be a pretty cute move. And the really important thing here is that at 13, you had no idea when you were going to fall below 50% health. Because if you fell below 50% health, you were a dead man as a melee support healer. Classifications. Yeah. I don't know about you, but my games got real ganky this week as I climbed. Yeah. The, the higher I climbed, the more ganky it got and the more salty opinion of Zero Tool I formed. <laughs> He's getting a lot of bans. I don't, I don't play against him. Yeah. Yeah, I, like I, was, I started climbing and I was playing with our, our mutual friend Doribo and then the, the patch dropped and we look at it and Doribo's just like, I can't believe they didn't nerf Zero Tool. And I'm like, that's not that bad, is it? We got back in the game, started playing Zero Tool every game. I'm like, it's that bad. He's, oh my yeah. God. <laughs> if they, they buffed him by decreasing his mana costs and that's a pretty powerful I mean, he is insta ban my main bans right now are in the, in the games i see anna is getting an early ban yep I've, uh, that's another thing that uh, as i climbed suddenly anna bans everywhere yeah yeah garrosh diablo a new barack no more asmodans don't see him at all this week and nobody messes with kale in my band so when i'm saying i'm kale thoss playing non-stop it's a plat thing because there's disrespect for the hero and what he can do. Okay. And that's kind of what I was getting around to, is that I think the, the meta has something to do with Kael'thas' success and not just a lack of ability to spread. Right, and all these all these mana changes that we talked about earlier could just rapidly change the meta as people realize that so-and-so can stay on the field longer than the other guy. I mean, we were already just to tooting Arthas for the last month or two. If he has full mana going into fights now, and Diablo is out of mana, that could be that could be the big shift in the wind that we've been begging for. Could be. Um, Yurel got some underpick talent changes. I don't think this is going to do really anything for her. If I'm being honest. Uh, hey, that. one of these is really cool. Okay, so hit me. At level one, you have your. Marad's insight. This is where if you damage an enemy here with the basic ability, your next basic attack would heal you. That was the go-to pick for a long, long time, basically since we figured out Urel after release. And they've nerfed it. They've tried to rein it in and make it only hit heroes. So Light of Calibor was this heal-based talent that just didn't bring home as much health as Marat's insight in the long run. But now, hitting an enemy hero increases the healing by 40%. If there is more than one hero hit, the bonus is increased by 80%. So we're looking at a bigger heal coming out of her, kind of uh, like a Murad and um, Thunderclap, sort of late game heal on our Urel at level one. A, a higher healing Urel, is that still better than other things you would like to put in lane? All right, smart guy. It's true, it's true. You're absolutely 100%, right? Like, Urel jumps into you, ha! And she heals a bunch. And she's still the wrong target to hit. <laughs> and so you ignore her and move on with your life. Like, it, it ha you lose to your Urel. Sometimes they get a curse on Cursed Hollow, go leaping over your wall while you're trying to D at the gate because the buildings aren't on. And she just goes ham in there, hits people outside the wall, causes all sorts of havoc. And Urel won a game like that. Heck, if she does her, you know, level 10 where she heals herself, the, sake, or the Ardent Defender... She might want to be targeted by all those buildings. Might jump over the top during a battlefield eternity. I mean, you're objective. getting you're getting some some backup from the in the chat room. We're saying that the just being more efficient with this heal by using Q instead of spamming abilities for lane clear to just stay alive is more efficient. Therefore, going to make her a better lane presence, which might be right. It might definitely be right in the, the, a post Rexar world, which I think we might be living in, or right, at least a post Rexar right. lane clear world. With the mana cost that she has, this will make her more efficient. And as the chat said, if you are trying to work your health up slowly back with little hits of 128 on your auto attacks while trying to hit an enemy here, you're probably absorbing a lot of splash damage. 
And you're also zoning people out with Light of Karabor. And if they learn what this text does, they might run away in the first place, clearing the lane, zoning them out, and getting you XP they didn't get. Well, I give everyone permission to email me and inform me that I need to eat my hat if Urel just somehow kicks the meta door down after this. Yeah, you're you're not wrong in your uh, in your trepidation. This is I, we'd all rather see something else. I think it's kind of that diva thing. You're like, you know, that might be a really good diva, and I like what she brought to the table. But it, you know, it could have been something that made sense. Could have just been something that didn't bump everybody around and send them flying in random directions half the time. Meanwhile, I'm here on Toronto trying to land stuns, just going, what? <laughs> stop, stop all the bumper cars. <laughs> all right, let's talk about nerfs. Um, because God. it seems uh, I feel personally attacked. <laughs> <laughs> it um, was coming for you, man. Oh, it was, but they could have. It didn't have to be as bad. A new rack up first. Um, this feels like a ner- I, this. I feel like I'm having deja vu. This feels like a nerf that Nubarak got like a year ago. <laughs> his basic attack damage is down. Uh, just under 5% reduction to his basic attack damage to his, his base kit. Uh, and then impale and burrow charge. In fact, I, so so let's just do it this way. Basic attack, impale, burrow charge all essentially had their damage reduced by around 5-ish percent. Yeah. You feel it, man. I'm sure. I'm sure. I mean, cooldown up on Cocoon by 10 seconds. Legion of Beetles, which was pretty darn good, lost 10 of its spell armor. Uh, they came for they came for a new brack and he'll be okay. He'll be okay. It to me this seems like maybe one too many, like they did too many things all at once, but I mean, time will tell. It just seems that, uh, I mean, historically, they have been a lot slower to adjust, to to buff back heroes that previously were dominant. Looking at you, Rhaegar, and your ancestral heal that we uh, sat on for years. (laughs) Yeah, I wonder where the offense lies. And if it sounds like they're just doing a big blanket kind of attack. Yes. And maybe they're not entirely sure which talent or which ability is really causing the issue. I mean, clearly Cocoon, they didn't want it available as often. Uh, this cooldown reduction, though, was really important back in the day when it originally came out because it meant that we moved Cocoon into the range of other one-minute cooldown abilities, 60 seconds, which allowed it to be a counter to a lot more things if we were fighting routinely every time cooldowns were available. And now we're now the casual game is really not affected because you're not going to dragon strike uh, or uh, you're not going to Genji blade. What's it called? Dragon, X strike. Dragon blade. Or dragon, dragon, dragon blade. You're thinking of X strike. Does dragon the X blade. strike and then the dragon blade. Yeah. You're not going to do it on cooldown just because. And a new brack might always not be in range for that just because action. Right. There's but, this there's this 10 minute wi- or 10 second window now. Yeah. Right. Um, so I think that's I think that's fine. I'm just you know obviously a little concerned because it's a favorite hero of mine. Uh, and on top of that, Rexar uh, doesn't have wave clear anymore. <laughs> they nerfed his wave clear um, into the ground. Granted, it was excruciatingly strong before. Uh, easy prey. The bonus damage on that no longer applies to Misha Charge, which was where Rexar was getting the wave clear from. Your bear could hit the entire lane if it was even if it was fanned out easily as a matter of fact it was easier to hit the whole wave if it was fanned out versus in a straight line because of the distance of charge i didn't know about this at all and i feel like i missed out on a glorious thing uh it was broken and i went 5-0 yesterday before the patch yeah and then you had a bad time like the second the patch hit the second the patch hit i stopped winning games that's insane so yes it, it was a mistake you actually cleared because Misha Charge was empowered against all minions and mercenaries yep. me, me, in one big wave. Yes. Yeah, so you would do a Misha Charge, and it would get that 150% bonus damage on the whole wave when you Misha Charge through them. And it would just be this big burst of wave clear damage. And I'm Which, sitting here, like, counting my pennies in lane, thinking I'm real cute taking Bird of Prey for lane clear. Bird of Prey is bad. And I think it's still bad. 
Because the only way you're getting a fit, like, because so imagine, imagine your wave spreads out, Kyle. You've got the three dudes yeah. in the front, the wizard in the middle, and the three dudes in the back. If it's fanned out, how can you hit the whole lane with your stupid bird? You can't. You had to get exactly. out exactly. Rainer style. If you're when lucky, out the door. if you're lucky, and it's fanned out, or if you're you, you do it correctly, you can hit five of them on a diagonal. You can hit two in front, the center dude, and then two in back on a diagonal. And what did I just talk about? As I climbed, the gank meta just slammed down on top of me. So you know what I'm definitely not freaking doing on Rexar is running ahead of my wave to land a stupid bird of prey in a straight line. Yeah, I mean, even like running up and around to the side so you could just straight line the arch. Oh yeah, just put myself in the bush with that zero tool. Sounds wonderful. Hey. Ain't no pro. There, there's a Praxis Orb right there. You can go grab it while you run away for the hills. <laughs> Maybe you hit a Misha charge because you weren't using it for the lane clear now. You'll get out okay. Right, right. so this is me going, uh, this, this was definitely way too strong before. Um, and maybe th th this is probably, I'm assuming this is just their goal. Like they just want you to, I guess, still take easy prey because the other talents are still trash. Oh. <sighs> They're I feel like I missed talents. free ice cream day. This sucks. You did miss ice cream day. I'm sorry. Dude, I had no idea. Like, I am honestly getting in lane and being like, bird of prey. Here we go. Pick you. You know, shooting at him, throwing the bird across everybody. Be like, yeah, I did it. No problem. Oh, man. Easy prey. I'm not doing that. I don't need mercenaries. It's it's just bad. So, so like, I'm, I'm sitting here saying this needed to be addressed because it was too powerful. But, man. But... You didn't do anything else with the other level one talents. Like, look, every we would just spend an hour going through all of these nuanced changes, trying to help talent diversity and address issues in the game. And we get to Rexar, and it's just we just we just took your wave clear away and did nothing. They in the dev comments say, "Oh, it was encroaching on a bird of prey's design space." And it's like, no, it's just better because bird of prey is a shit talent. Hmm. Like, it's just a bad talent. So if you want me to take Bird of Prey, make it good. In, in, increase the width of Bird of Prey or something. Like, it's just bad. Like, it just doesn't work. So, I don't know. Like I said, like, obviously, if, they're, if their real goal, which is not stated in the developer comment, is we want these other talents to be bad, <laughs> then cool, you've achieved it. But I just find it odd looking at every other change in this, in this, uh, in this patch going, how did the other two level one talents not get addressed? Yeah, well, Flare's fun. You know, it matches the cooldown, lasts for as long as it goes. Uh, doesn't It's not killable. It's a non-killable ward. So, uh, the, the fun enhancement? Yeah, it's just, it's weird. It's very strange. Um, but, I mean, it, 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 at least, you know, they, they adjusted the di bonus damage from 150 to 200, so that's good. So Misha's doing more single target damage to minions and mercenaries. Um, it's, it obviously is still not nearly as good as it was before. It was too strong. I would like to see the other two talents get a buff. That's fair. Yeah, that's, that, I, I, that's the only real leg I have to stand on because this was really powerful. Yeah, it, it, honestly, if they want Bird of Prey to shine, I feel like they need to get rid of the minion damage on Misha. I would love to see that be building armor. That'd be really cool. It would be interesting, yeah, because so often I hide in a bush and just let Misha chew on buildings. <laughs> yeah, or and it's the Stitches thing, right? Like, we don't have a lane. Get in there, Stitches. Just start, and we'll work on the... We're going to get that keep. We have 20 seconds. And if Misha could run with some armor for that, maybe too powerful. But it just seems weird for Easy Prey to be sitting with bonus minion damage and armor against them when Bird of Prey is sitting there, you know, rotting on the vine. Yeah. Yeah, that's why. It's, really, for me, this comes down to Bird of Prey. And what, like, what triggers me is that comment, like, "Well, it encroaches too much on Bird of Prey." It's like, "Well, no, it doesn't. Bird of Prey is just bad. That's why we're not taking it." Also, this was busted, and that's why we were taking this. But this, I think, it's, I think the answer is still easy prey. It's just that now it's, well, I mean, almost balanced. But yeah, I just, feel for you, man. Yeah, you have to lane like a normal hero now, Rexar players. <laughs> Okay. He's, I still think the redesign was great. I love how much of a hero Rexar is. Mm -hmm. I love seeing Isha go down and Rexar still I'll auto attack friends. I'm here for you. Yep. Totally. Uh, I mean, that that's what I really like about it. I'm still playing Rexar. 
uh, you know, I, my joy on the hero was from my dominance in team fights. It wasn't from, look how fast I can clear a lane, but it was a nice bonus. Yeah, yeah. So. Maybe this maybe this was for me, Kyle. Maybe this was because of all the times I've complained that I've learned I could just be a do what Zagara does uh, better on other heroes and still contribute to a team fight. You were cheating. You you did something that wasn't in the text. It was a bug, uh, not really according to them. It just encroached. So, yeah, yeah, it's fine. Um, but I'm not done. I'm not been done being salty just yet, <laughs> just yet, Kyle, because Sylvanas. Um, Possession has been pretty greatly nerfed. The cooldown on possession is going from 8 to 12 seconds. Four seconds being tacked onto this sucker. Um, and nothing else. So much like Rexar, they're just beating down uh, an overperforming talent and doing nothing else to make other talents look uh, appealing. Um, I, I apparently... This did make me go and look at statistics. Because I haven't looked at Sylvanas statistics in quite a while. Possession has been running away with it. And I was of the opinion that much like my uh, very clear opinions of level 1 Rexar talents, that the other level 4 options on Sylvanas were absolute trash and you just don't bother entertaining the idea of them. Um, I still think that of Unstable Poison, but something is happening with Mercenary Queen. It has a very high win rate and, an, and a decent pick rate when compared to possession possession is still running away with it but some people are still taking mercenary queen and i guess it's working at least with the stats available to us but i don't get it because to me i was always looking at mercenary queen being like sylvanas is, a, is an assassin now why would i want to take this talent that forces me to be not with the team fight we might be able to answer this question right now if we go over to map win rate and we saw both skaya in the top win rate and that is probably where that pick rate comes from it doesn't power the gun that is a mercenary ah so so we we take it on okay volskaya oh so braxis immediately comes to mind as well so you take this into uh battlegrounds where you're just planning to fight with your mercenaries right or your summon in this case functions as a mercenary and is empowered in the area okay so um, i was i was just wrong on my opinion of mercenary queen that's all uh, right yeah it, it's got its place and of course you know we're talking about all leagues here lots can be said for that you know solo sylvanas pushing with double wave in a lower league getting that keep getting that trickle xp opening up the core to a victory you know solo warriors they can still get it done sometimes on sylvanas if no one's looking same thing with asmodan i do agree though that unstable poison and this is of course coming from my my co-host during my stream, Kristen, wanting nothing but possession because possession is amazing when we have periodic catapults in the world. Unstable poison, I think, is a pretty big bummer talent, but it's got a really, it's 1% off pick rate from possession, which is insane to me. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't understand it. And then you look at win rates and yeah. And great question in the chat. Does Mercenary Queen empower the Zerg wave? Those are monsters. So there is a classification of the mercenaries, monsters, and minions. Correct. Monsters are also the minions, uh, the little the little skeletons that appear in the infernal shrines, as well as the uh, pop, 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 jumpy boy that comes out of the portal. Jumpy boy. Oh, uh, the infernal. Punisher. 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 Punisher on infernal shrines. Why did I call it infernal? Ignore me. Oh, oh, dude. I would honestly. I'd be all for it. Reskin. Kill the scourge until an infernal shows up. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I'm on. I'm on Sudafed right now. Let, bear with me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. No. Okay. All right. But I mean, just because it doesn't empower the Zerg wave doesn't mean it's not. It, it's still not really good on that map because that's only a two lane map with a with with traditional mercs that actually push the wave. Uh, right. Not not turrets. Although it does buff the turret, doesn't it? Yes, yeah. Okay, so, that's so it does buff the turret, even if we're not dealing with, like, traditional lane-pushing mercenaries. It's a very high likelihood that on Braxis, you are going to be fighting with your mercenaries. Exactly. So that's why I, I still I still bring up Braxis. Uh, anyways, let's get to Varian. Um, uh, I'm just salty here at the end, man. I'm just, I'm just shaking it on, dude. Don't um, worry, we have things that will make less sense coming up. So, so Perry's mana cost is up significantly, and Lion's Maw got a quest and damage buff, and High King's quest damage bonus got a sizable nerf. 
that's all good. Um, Kyle, Colossus Smash still takes no skill to play, and you just hope you get a win, uh, a lead, and then you just win the game without trying. Uh huh. Um, and I hate you, and I hope you stop playing this game. <laughs> well, to be fair. I would ask you, what's your win rate on Rexar this season? Okay, well, that was an executable plan that you had that maybe <laughs> adapted based on the strategy around you. Colossal okay. Smash variants climb with a 52% win rate. All because right. Because they smash and smash, and they don't really care what happens around them, so they do climb. It's a decent talent. Th yeah. But they're not really planning. Right. But when you lose to it, it feels really bad. It does. Yes, it does. And this is a game that at one point we saw, I think, three back-to-back -back nerfs to Tracer and Genji under the banner of making the game feel better. Well, I'm happy about these changes. I, I understand that it didn't include Colossal Smash, which, you know, if, if that's if that's where your hate train's going, I can't follow you because it is... It's a gamble. I just... I would rather have it over the other two on my team right now. Unless, of course, we're dealing with a taunt situation. Like, anytime there's a Phoenix and they're like, I'm going to smash him. I, ha I have Shattering Blow at 13. Phoenix is dead. I'm like, okay, grats on your late game plan. But what are you going to do at level four to make us win? And then well, I'm going to smash Phoenix. Oh, awesome. <laughs> It is, this is a very sore, po po uh, sore spot for me right now because the po the points where I'm like, oh, you got a two level lead and you picked the skillless talent. Good for you. Uh, all right, but High King's Quest had to be adjusted. It was the auto pick talent, sixty eight percent popularity. Everyone was doing it regardless of build. Uh, Taunts liked it because you were gonna get more heroic strikes that were gonna be bigger. It 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 just it worked for everybody. I like that they're empowering Lion's Maw and plus Lion's Maw. You know, you, you'd take Lion's Heart, maybe, the healing off it, and you'd want to do like a Lion's Maw build, and it was just bad. So I hope they're looking at level 7 as well, because second win is the pick there. All right, thank you for bringing me back to the sensible town. I, I'm fine with the changes they made. I'm not fine with the changes they didn't make. I mean, if, Think of the cutscene, all right? How many Fell Reapers have there been? How many bosses... Have we fought in World of Warcraft? What did you, where you, I'm not sure where you're going with this. We all know that Phoenix is going to respawn even if you kill him. But Varian's got to smash, man. He's got to go deep. He's got to give his life for the sacrifice. And he doesn't care. He doesn't care about you and your opinions of a well orchestrated army. He'd rather throw his life to the wind now and look glorious doing it. <laughs> uh, that's fine. He. he he should then explode into a green mist and lose the game. It just never rests. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> that's in your example, Varian is now dead. That's and the balance. In right? your you example, think... Varian lost. <laughs> what, what if we gave it the, the, the Gul'dan treatment, right? Gul'dan has the uh, level 13 talent where he increases his death timer. Dark bargain. You get 30% more health and respawn 15 se seconds longer. If you go Colossal Smash, you res slower. Uh, no, you should. Uh, your team will always be one level lower than they are. That's what you should get when you take Colossal Smash. Wow. Savage. Because you are banking on a lead. Horde bias. <laughs> uh, clearly salty about this. Are you uh, salty about Ana? I am. I, 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 not as salty as I am about Varian, but it's like it's all these compounding things. I'm just like, Zagara got no help. You're just blatantly nerf hammering Anubarak and Rexar and Sylvanas, but freaking Colossal Smash Varian and Ana get a pass? What world am I living in? Ana didn't get a pass. They're going after her main talent. Oh, Maybe. barely. Before. Barely. It is barely, yes. You, biotic enhancements, uh, redu reduction from four seconds to two seconds, so less grenades for Ana. But this is what empowered her whole build. The easy build we've been talking about for weeks for Ana, where you just spam those grenades and not really have to aim or do the other sort of things that made Ana complex. All right, so Anubarak, Rexar, Sylvanas. Uh, all right, the, do you know what those nerfs are? 
That's the scene in Office be- Space when they, they beat the, the copier out in the field. Yeah. Varian and Anna, do you know what that is in Nerf World? That's Sebulba in episode one walking past Anakin's pod racer and breaking out that one little piece and cackling like he actually did something and Anakin wins anyway. I really like Night Terrors on a personal level for DPS Anna, and it's a dream of mine because I love poison heroes. So I'd like to disagree on the grounds that I hope it works out. <laughs> That's fair. We're getting very personal here at the end of the show, so <laughs> I'm, I'm, I will allow it. Night Terrors, upon waking, heroes will now take 10% of their total maximum health in damage from the sleep dart. This is pretty cute. And you will actually have a chance to pick it because you no longer are stacking, perhaps, with your level four biotic enhancement, biotic grenade talents, with your level one biotic grenade talent, seven. It's just dirty. We got to clean up Ana. Grenades are too powerful. And they shouldn't. They shouldn't be empowered in this way. Uh, I, I, I stand by my, the comments that I've been. I feel parroting or just repeating week after week is that Ana to me is that it should be a high skill floor healer, mm-hmm. and grenades completely take the wind out of what I uh, think should be the theme of Ana. Right. The window on grenade in a perfect world is extremely small. Receive one hundred percent less healing for two seconds. That is that clutch moment where you ruin an Alex Draws' day. Any of these talents that increase the healing for the enemy's hit are causing you to pierce more when you're just piling on top of their heal. It's not the elegant sort of counter pick we want. Instead, what we're getting is brute force, uh, increasing the healing bonus of grenade and reducing its cooldown. The anti-healer increases the duration of the healing reduction by 25%. I don't think we should mess with any of those things. I think... Grenade is just clutch. And there are abilities like this in the game that just don't get any augments because they're there for one particular reason. And maybe in that way, Grenade was a mistake. It should have been a heroic, so it was a counter pick sort of thing. That gets a little complicated. Yeah, I mean, I struggle to go that far, but I think it's just too powerful like i'm surprised they haven't dialed back any of the numbers on grenade so i don't know yeah i don't know and um, in passing conversation i was i was talking to Dariba yesterday he was just like well i i I think this is a big reason why diablo is struggling right now is the prevalence of ana and i was like oh my god i never thought about that but i think he's right that's fair Uh, i mean a lot of our power to close the deal on Diablo is based on his level one feast on fear. Whenever he gets a stun, he gets a health percentage back. And if you cut off that health percentage, Diablo is dead in the water. Yeah. And he used to be this way against roots, but Malfurion's not big trouble right now. feels like he's coming back, but I feel like that again is just due to support mains. I'm with you on the Malfurion. I think keep an eye on him. I think he's, he's, he's on the rise. Like a tree. He grows. Yes. Yes. So, I don't think Anna's going anywhere after these nerfs, and I don't think her build is changing either. No. 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 Uh, Lucio. Um, b- b- kind of like Mercenary Queen on Sylvanas, where I didn't understand it. Uh, Lucio is rising in the win rates, despite the fact that I would rather have another healer on my team. Uh, people are making it work, and they ended up uh, kind of nerfing some of his popular talents and buffing some of his underpicked talents because Lucio is on the rise. He is, and he does have the counter with the beat drop that is matching these explosive openers we talked about with the pyroblast. So Lucio has a very real spot in the current meta. The problem is that his reworked abilities aren't really coming into play. So they gave him a mana reduction of 35% on his high five. They're trying to encourage you to use that ability. Otherwise, there's just talent diversity picks, boombox sort of things. House party is probably really the part where Lucio mains are going to be like, no, you couldn't. They did because this was the most popular winniest talent at 20. Hmm. Yeah. I've had real, real uh, back and forth experiences with Lucio's on my teams. Sometimes it's like, oh, this is great. This is the greatest thing ever. And other times it just feels like, boy, I didn't do much. Yeah. I'd rather have a bright wing just for executability to, to know things are happening. 
I feel I feel very much like Lucio the way you do about Colossal Smash Variant. It just if we lose that two levels, that Lucio trickle feed isn't helping anybody. Ah, uh, that's a good point. And I don't want to play him because he's slow. And it, the, the only thing that seduced me about Lucio was moving fast. Yeah, it was a big part of his fun factor. Yeah, uh, you remember, and, and you're right. I didn't thought about that. I think that's yeah, because I don't want to play him anymore. Like after his changes, I have no interest in playing him. And I thought it was because I just thought the his his wall his kick off the wall ability is just awkward. <laughs> but I've seen it do some good jukes. I'll give it that. Yeah, yeah, but actually trying to hit what you're trying to hit with it is it is very hard because of how much your cursor is involved in keeping you on the wall. I've got one big point to Lucio, and that is that Reverse Amp is currently the most popular talent pick at seven, and I don't really care about the damage it deals. I just really like that when you activate Crossfade, it is extremely clear to me, your ally, where I should stand. Mm. And that's nice. Yeah. I wish that was always a fact. We're concerned about, you know, view clutter. I really like knowing if I'm in Brightwing range. I'm okay, I'm okay with that. Give me that option. Let me let me let me check a box. I'd be very into that. Yeah, I don't I don't think it would be that bad. No. Yeah. It's crossfade. It doesn't last long. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Abather. Uh, kind of seeing nerves like this. Also could have gone gone under under pick talent changes, but uh, care of his baseline had the shield amount reduced. Uh, by about four and a half percent, so that's why we're filing him under nerf because we got a nerf to a base ability. Um, but Locust Strain had the damage increase from forty to forty-six, so that's a fifteen percent right. increase on Locust Strain. But that's not really why a lot of us are taking Abathur right now. No, and the locusts now, when they're reworked form, do not last as long. So a damage increase in that department isn't as high. I do see a lot of Abathur bans. Uh, I'm happy for them because every time someone shows an Abathur, someone goes, oh, man, I'm going to ill it in that. And I go, oh, no. And then we ban the Abathur. I'm like, ah, all be- it's all better. <laughs> that's how I feel not, about when the Diablo ban Abathur. comes up. If people are still showing Diablo and then the Diablo ban comes from the other team, and I'm like, you have no idea how happy you just made me, other team. It's okay. There's a couple of little augments in here, but like Garrett said, they're all just about changing your talent diversity and trying to get you away from a shielding build. I listen. We're, you know, we're getting personal here at the end. I don't care about try hard anymore with Abathur. I'm this when I am tired, but I still want to play heroes. It's the end of the night. I'm going into quick match. I'm playing alone. I like minor locus Abathur. That's my one of my favorite things to do at the end of the night. Is just move around the map and push lanes and plant mines. And if you're into either of those things, if you if you miss the days of mine Abathur or locus Abathur, there's a lot here for you. Popularity is actually higher, 83% on Evolved Monstrosity. How times have changed. Yeah, good. I mean, did you see the the, the healing increase Yeah. on yeah. the uh, Volatile Mutation, right? It went from 50 to 75% healing increase of, of the damage dealt. That's massive. And this is already the most popular and highest win rate talent if we're looking at something like Hot Slogs. So, you know, it's not all bad for Abathur. No. Yeah. Uh, then we got some kind of middling changes to Rhaegar, Alarak, and Li Ming. Do you want to talk about Rhaegar or Alarak? Or can we move straight to Li Ming? <laughs> uh, Rhaegar is pretty cute. Uh, it is a level 16 talent, but I think it shows a embrace, an embracing of the casual and perhaps more fun design philosophies they've had after HCC ending. Rising Storm has been re-added to the game, or well, at least previously, it had its moment in increasing the damage of lightning based on how many people it hit. Well, it was, it was called yeah. lightning bond. Lightning bond was removed and now that lightning yeah. bond functionality is being tucked into rising storm at level 16. So if you were a fan of 2017 Regar, support Ocalypse Regar who would go take mer- mercenary camps by himself, they have decided to have let you have that back now at level 16. So it's not as beauteous as it once was. It's up against your slow, your mega slow totem. Yeah, it's really 90%. late in the game, right? Like yeah. that's that's super late to be like, and I can take Merc camps, guys. And everyone's like, that's fine. We're fighting and skin of our teeth victory is here. Get over here. But the part I really like about it is that it matches their philosophy with the mana. They're basically saying that we don't care if a support has amazing lane clear 
at level 16 because it shouldn't be a factor then. And hey, if you decide that Kael'thas gets to be part of the four man and Rhaegar cleans up a Merc camp and Elaine, and that's your strategy, we all agreed to it, that's a cute idea. And I'm I'm all for things like this. You know, what what if, let's go just completely off our rocker, level 20, hit a button, all minions die on the map. Like that is allowed in this new sort of philosophy world without it being an issue that it's on a support. It, it seems a little strong. Sure, sure. <laughs> We're, it's like all lanes, lava wave. Nobody wants that. No. Now, remember that talent that you gravity lapse minions and they die instantly on Kael'thas? That was ridiculous. <laughs> So Medivh had one where he would use his uh, arcane and just destroy minions. And it's a cute idea. We can make those things. We don't have to say Medivh hits minions with his little wave and all those minions insta die. Crap talent. That what if what if it went on and went down the whole lane and killed everybody? We're saying that level 20, it doesn't matter anymore. And we can expect based on this philosophy, more interesting talents like this to be on non lane clean heroes. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you. I mean, I, uh, I agree that I, I think in a non-esports world, we're kind of finding ourselves with these. And plus, we haven't once talked about this talent and the ability that it gives you two lightning uh, shields on who you cast it on and then on you, Rhaegar, yourself. This is also, you can use this in a fight. This is good in a fight. You can put it on another person. It doesn't have to be on your totem killing mercenaries. That's not the only way that you can use this perk. Rhaegar lightning build is really, really fun. I suggest picking all the lightning talents in your quick match for fun. Yeah. Let's see where it goes. Yes. Uh, Li Ming, Ether Walker, the adjusted functionality now removes the mana cost of teleport. Developer comment, how about now? I've heard people are enjoying this a little bit. It goes with the mana theme, uh, but until I have wave clear on Calamity back... Still not now. I mean, Li Ming is at 42%. She has been in the bottom win rates for a very, very long time. It's cute developer comment, first of all. But I, I'm not feeling her still. The mana it, cost of teleport is not the reason that she's being held back from an even yeah. close to 50% win rate. I, mean, I, I, don't, I don't have it up right now. Are you looking at it? What, what, how many games are played on Li Ming? Because I bet the number is still very high. This is a very well, popular, very beloved hero. Right. We're looking at uh, 3,700 for Power Hungry to 400 now. That's a lot more than it was, picks. Oh, I was just looking at games played. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, it looks like in the in last seven days, almost 6,000 Li Ming games logged. That's a lot. That's a popular hero. Yeah. Like... It ain't teleport. It teleports mana cost. That's not it. That's not the problem. And we're only talking about Stormlink here. Like, people are picking this in a drafted environment in these numbers. Yeah. So it's happening purposefully. Yeah. Do you... Is it okay? I, I guess this is the only place we haven't really taken our Leeming conversations as of late. Is, is it okay that Leeming is lower? Is she just a high-coordination... Hero, do you have to trust your team because her strength really comes in resets and cleanup? Much like Genji. Honestly, much like Diablo. I've been starting to think about Diablo a little more like this. Diablo is a high coordination tank. Our reset heroes were the bane of esports as well as being extremely entertaining. So we nerf them instead of removing that option. I mean, remember some of the, the Genji Li Ming on one team together, and all they had to do was get a pick, and things that went wild. It, and you got it, to see some real sparks fly. Yeah, in you know, back in the in a world where HGC existed, that they were the carries, really. Like that that was your carry experience watching a game of Heroes of the Storm is when the Li Ming or the Genji would go off. But it they never really could be that in pickup games because the coordination is just not there. And now maybe the reset portion isn't as big of a, of a floor to clear, right? Because all that needs to happen is your team needs to do enough damage that something dies and you get a reset. But 
there, you, Genji is still a difficult hero to play. Li Ming, as is in the grand scheme of mages and landing her abilities, there's a lot of skill there. Except for the 54% pick rate on Calamity. Yes. Which is a knowledge-based thing of knowing what your damage is going to look like on that remaining health bar. But that's, I feel like, why in Heroes of the Storm, Li Ming is as low and has to be as low as she is because she can carry. And because that is really powerful, Calamity. And she's left in Heroes Limbo. In another MOBA, she'd be fine. But in Heroes, she has to be as nerfed, as an un underpowered, as babysat as she is because we don't carry in Heroes of the Storm. And we can't let our carries run away with it. And that's kind of what I was getting at, is maybe yeah. this is where she has to exist. Yeah, I mean, I, I love... Uh, Kristen and I run a really cute combo where I do Alex Straza W build. I make orbs, and Li Ming has power hungry, so I make orbs, she eats orbs, and we get bonus damage out of it, and infinite mana for Li Ming. It's a lot of fun. That's why you were thinking about that talent way earlier yeah. when I was like, mm, do we need another Malfurion? Um, interesting. That does sound yeah. fun. Can we do that at some point? That sounds like a good yeah. time. <laughs> well, dude, we can absolutely do that together. I blast. miss Li Ming. Uh, is really what this comes down to. Uh, but yeah. Uh, anyways, are you? Let, let me turbo through Alarak for the few, the five people who need to hear. Okay. It. Okay, Alarak, ruthless momentum, super quick cooldowns on your telekinesis are now available at level one. If you don't want to do any sort of lightning talents, this could bring about a huge swing into a Blade of the High Lord build, Ruthless Momentum, Crazy Town. We'll wait and see what happens. Alarak needs help, and it might not be this. Okay. <laughs> I still have, I still struggle against Alarak from time to time. He's great when he's great. You know what I really had to work on uh, to, uh, this week was uh, getting my bear the hell off of him when he would counter-strike. Yeah, yeah. That that was a that was a learning curve. I, I mean, someone I had someone be like, "You can't pick Kale Foss into Alarak. He's going to counter strike you with the poison damage you put on, which is the flame counts as poison damage since we don't do elements. We're not Pokemon. <laughs> it, it doesn't matter because you're so far back. Yeah, that, that triangle you've got full wiggle room to get out of the way. Mm -hmm. So that's still the go to ten pick. Yeah. Um. So we're already in ninety minutes. Not going to have time for strategy. We already knew we weren't going to do email. And we are going to record earlier than usual next week because you are traveling to my state, even though you will be nowhere near me. That's true. Um, Tour so, of the family. Uh, I will take this time to tell everybody um, next week is a great time to do some Q&A. So if you have a question or a comment, send it to itncast at gmail.com. So we're probably going to pull in quite a few emails. If you're a patron over at patreon.com slash ITN, you can leave a question in the Discord. You can message it to us directly. In Patreon, there's plenty of ways to get a hold of us. But uh, now is the time to do it. Because we're going to be putting one, we're going to be banking an episode uh, so that we don't, so that y'all don't miss an Into the Nexus next week. And we had a strategy prepared for this week that we were pretty sure wasn't going to make it. Uh, so that will also be moved to next week's episode of Into the Nexus. The promised thrall talk is coming. Yes, the promised thrall talk. So if you you are dead center, don't worry, dude. Your email is here, and it's in that strategy talk. Um, anyways, before we move into what I'm calling the outrage corner and wrap this episode up, let's thank those of uh, those folks out there who are supporting us via patreon.com slash ITN because not only did we get quite a few new patrons last week, we also had some current patrons up their pledges Um trying to get us back to where we were, where we were able to pay guests to come on the show. So thank you very much, everybody. If you're new, if you're upping your pledge, whatever the case is, thank you so much for supporting us. Uh, and would like to remind everyone, if you missed last week, we have new goals. Um, we're, we're trying to get back to our goal, being able to pay our guests. Uh, and we will bring back our general podcast of Week Sauce if we hit some of our newer uh, other goals as well. Uh, but this week, I want to thank some of our newer patrons. Thank you to Karu Zen, uh, Mr. Smitty, and Zach Allen, uh, as well as, of course, our producers, Declan H and Cheesy Bob. Thank you very much. If you like the show, you want to support us, patreon.com slash ITN. It's been really cool seeing all the support over there this past week. 
Yeah, no, it's, it's been great to hear so many people so passionate about heroes that this can be your Heroes of the Storm check-in corner, hangout place for your week. We, should, we might as well lead the outrage corner by saying it's still a great game and you're allowed to love it. And we thank you for joining us weekly to continue loving this fine game that we continue to love. Well, I don't think the outrage is, is that bad. Um, no. And we already talked about the classics game thing, which is why I was like, I'm going to cor- coin a phrase. We don't need to talk about classics games anymore. We mentioned that at the top of the show. However, there's one thing from this patch that you, listener at home, are probably noticing we haven't talked about yet, which is that... As far as matchmaking was concerned on yesterday's patch, April 17th, if you're listening to this after the fact, um, that the party size of the enemies uh, will no longer be shown during the match loading screen, and they also removed all party size restrictions during the matchmaking process. This did not go over well. No, it did not. Let's take it in stages, though. Because it's a complicated statement, and I really wish they had put out a blog post reinforcing what the rules are and what they now are. Like, there are so many rules to a matchmaker that also get thrown out the window at a certain point. There is, for example, the rule that it's going to search longer before just saying, give you a game. If you are higher league, it really, really is going to work through everything it can to get that even match if you're in Grandmaster. And that's why they're stuck sitting there so long. If you do a five stack of bronze, it's going to think about it a little less because it doesn't matter as much for your league in that case. Now, if you're all bronze, of course, hopefully it gives you an all bronze match. That's besides the point here. There, there are, this was already happening. If you were a five stack, you could still fight five solos. We, we'd all seen it. We've all experienced it. If you're a solo player, you've absolutely been there where they have two twos and you're all fives. The rule we knew was that we were going to be slightly higher MMR than those stacks on the enemy side, meaning that match, despite their coordination over there, was going to be more even. So what was happening in a support of this change way is that five stacks were sitting there, sitting there, sitting there until they reached a maximum waiting period, and then it just did it anyway. They were making the experience look and feel really bad if you had a four-stack, five-stack, three-stack. And so they decided to just, based on their algorithms, stop that process. Which I think is fine as long as what they say here that they're going to, that the MMR should even it out as long as that works. And the true concern I have here, and the, my request is that this is working across all five of the solos, not let's fly in Grandmaster for the Platts, and now we're even against the team of Diamonds. No, we all should be elevated in some way above the enemy team, not compensated for. And we need to hear what the rules are right now for this before we all freak out I, uh, getting to the first statement here that party size will no longer be shown i had a game this week where my mouth fury and saw a party of five gave up he didn't quit he just zero effort into the game it was horrible he just didn't play because he knew there was a five stack and i get the philosophy of it you don't put any effort in you're not hurt when you lose i'm giving my all here so give me your all and this, to me, is a perfectly fine psychological change that they do in other games. In Dota, League of Legends, they don't tell you what your party size that you're fighting is. Heroes of the Storm wanted to be transparent. Uh, they, they put themselves on a pedestal. They said, we're going to, for the people, we're going to be transparent for you because we love you. And you know what? It was causing issues. The player base wasn't big enough for them to make the 5v5 matches every time. And they're taking that away because we ruined it. (laughs) I want to play devil's advocate, but I agree with you. This is really what this comes out to. I've been in the same exact scenario as what you talked about, where you see a five stack and someone on your team just gives up. Yeah. And I mean, this was, I think, maybe two months ago now, but what was one of my favorite stories from a couple months back before, obviously, the merge or whatever, was that we had a, a disconnected Valera at the very start of our game and we still ended up winning against a five stack. 
and we were not a five stack. We weren't even a four stack. We still ended up winning that game. I think it was on uh, Alterac. It was amazing. It was one of the best feelings I've ever had in this game, Kyle. <laughs> it's fun um, to beat a five stack. I, I will not. I'm, I'm with everybody, though. I am playing this game majority of the time solo. And my rank is entirely solo, slightly you know, put on by the fact that that's kind of my thing on Twitch. Is I'm that guy that's playing solo and showing you you can too. Yep, as as I am reminded every time I whisper you in the middle of the day and you're like streaming, I'm like, oh, yep, sorry, forgot. Yeah, and it, we're having conversation with the chat. You know, the, the, the production kind of would get weird because then I'm just hanging out with you guys and I want to talk to the stream at the same time. And you know, there's some background things there, but mostly it's just because I want to show people that you can climb this game solo in a game that couldn't be done, and we've done it season after season. But I do feel the sting, you know? I was placed in plat. I know a lot of people who are now diamond, now masters, have accelerated beyond the rate of which I can execute being one person, bringing all I can to a match. And I'm moving at a 3-2, at a really. Everything I do right now is 3-2 my days. And you reach, a, you reach a promotion wall, that 3-2 might be in the wrong order and you don't get promoted. And if I had some rocking friends, you know, maybe we'd go a little faster. And I, and I feel that. And I understand everybody out there who is a solo player of this game and feels burned by these updates from the Blizz Heroes team. And I wish I had more comforting words for you. I wish I could tell you that they're going to do something about it. They're going to bring you back solely. I don't know if we want that because the queues were long. It was, it was, I want to play the game. My cues are already and, long as a solo in this new merged world. Yeah, I, I, I had my first real stint of uh, duoing in Storm League yesterday, and the cues were so much better. It was such a faster yeah. queue from, from queuing up by myself. And, and that's what this all comes down to is that we, we, Heroes has always been a niche game, and it is now that, that statement is more true than it has ever been. Uh, which is a, a kind way of saying this is a small player base. And I'd look at all these changes, this included, as a way to combat just a low player count. That's something we're going to have to deal with. We have, we have planted our flag. This is the game that we like. This is the game that we love. This is where we choose to MOBA. And I don't want to wait 10 minutes for a game. And that's a... And, and the, the sensibility is winning out on this. Like, the community understands mostly the reason why these changes changes have happened and it seems like most people are like yeah this is a healthy change for the current state of this game you know we can't maybe have that solo queue exclusively anymore it it is sad i understand and particularly if you are if you came to it, you know, if you came to this game like me, you're, you're playing other MOBAs and you're like, boy, I sure wish they were shorter. Boy, I wish the jungle guy would participate before 15 minutes in and we actually did some team stuff. Hey, the mercenaries fight with me. Oh, sweet. The jungle guy did something that affects me. If you were like me and you came to this game alone and then realized you had friends playing it, well, that then, you know, you're kind of back to traditional Kyle here. You're, you're, you're playing alone again. That's okay. But if you came to this game with friends, and you're the last one there, you want a mode that is encouraging to your current situation. And you feel like you're not being taken care of. I don't know what to say because my own personal experience hasn't been that bad. The waits have been longer when I've been sold up. They haven't been absolutely terrible, but uh, I also didn't notice myself going up against a lot of five stacks before this change, and now I won't know unless I'm checking hot slogs, I guess. And I, I did, and we made it to, on my channel, Diamond 2 promotion last time, and we hit four games in a row against three stacks or larger and couldn't make it happen. It was, at that level, <sighs> It was coordinated Wombo Combo City, and it was really frightening. This and is after was, the uh, change? No, no, this was last season. Oh, last season. Last season. I apologize. Okay. Um, and that hurt, and I really felt the sting of being alone in the world, you know? 
Yeah. So I'm, I'm with you. And I hope that, I hope that this bearing of my emotions and souls to the solo play gives you some comfort because we're not immune, you know, here on Into the Nexus. We're not, not just chalking up and saying, ah, good times ahead, whatever. This hurts. But I fully understand why they did it. No, we, uh, uh, yeah, it's not like we we're constantly playing with five stacks of rocking players. Uh, it's actually couldn't be farther from the truth. I mean, folks can tune into your stream, which is the majority of your playtime, and see that you don't do that. And uh, I mostly just play with our friend Doribo, Dur who is very good, yeah. <laughs> for the record. But we don't stack it. It's just him and I doing our thing. So it's uh, it's fun. So anyway, I'm hoping to work my way into plat is my goal now. I think that's a good goal. It's good to have goals. I would have made it yesterday also. if I, but it would have been cheesy. I would have made it yesterday if I could have kept clearing entire waves with a single bear charge. Yeah, that's so sad, dude, that an update hits in the middle of your climb. No, I, yeah. I saw you. I checked I, in on you. I'm not even that mad about it, dude. Like, like, I'm probably sound madder back in the, like, like, my anger on that Rexar change is directed at the other two level one choices. Th th something needed to be done. It was yeah. bad. Uh, but, those other two talents are just stinky, man. There's still no choice in my mind. So, but yeah, opened up yesterday 5-0 in Storm League. It felt good. I saw that, and then the patch hits, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to log out for the day. And you messaged me that it was three losses in a row after that. Just yeah. What yeah. a swing. I went back and checked. Um, the first loss was actually before the patch, and it was the Diablo game. We had a Diablo on our team. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Please stop picking Diablo, everyone. <laughs> stop enforcing this need for Garrett to say it, really. Like, at this point, just, he doesn't need any more reinforcement to this philosophy, this this pet project we have. If you go back and look at my match history, it is binary. Diablo on my team, loss. Diablo on the enemy team, win. That's all it is. So, anyways... That's going to wrap it up for this very meaty episode. Yes. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in. If you want to support the podcast, patreon.com slash ITN is there for that exact reason. It's an opt-in subscription. A, a dollar, two dollars, ten dollars, whatever works for you, you can subscribe into the Nexus. And uh, as always, thank you to our producers, Declan H and Cheesy Bob. You can get into the Nexus t-shirts if you want to rep into the Nexus over at shirts.amove. TV. We're typically live Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern time. We started a little earlier today because I am still a little sick and pretty tired, to be honest. So thank you, Kyle, for starting a little early with me. Uh, and next week, uh, we will actually be recording on Monday afternoon, uh, which obviously a little closer to this than we usually like to pace our videos out. But Kyle, you are visiting all the family with your joyous news of a child on the way. Yes, yes. The the tour of the pregnant wife 2019. <laughs> yes. You will actually be in Florida. Uh and yeah. So observe her. No episode next she Thursday, but there will be an momentum episode. Momentum before standing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh there will be an episode next week, just not on Thursday. Just earlier than usual. We'll also be doing our Enter the Apex on Monday. Monday's just gonna be a big fat Garrett and Kyle day. It's gonna be a good Hell time. Yeah. Look forward to it. It's gonna be a fun Monday, man. So, again, I cannot stress enough. Send in your questions. Email. Patreon Discord. With if, if you are a patron and you haven't hooked your Discord up to your Patreon account, it just automatically puts you in. That's all you have to do. So, go and do that. Get in with all the other pat uh, ITN patrons in the Discord. It's a great place to hang out. Drop some questions in there. And then we'll uh, be answering a lot of questions on next week's episode. Uh, before we go, Kyle, where can everybody find you? You can find me over at youtube.com slash Kyle Ferguson, where videos will continue to upload throughout the week. I'm going to, I'm, this is shout out straight to our, our man who we skipped today, dead center. First ranked thrall game won it. Thanks to these fine tips. And that is posting over on the YouTube, youtube.com slash Kyle Ferguson and videos will appear during the week of my absence from the stream. Nice. Uh, I'm Garrett Art on Twitter. All the podcasts are at amove.tv. Uh, Jocelyn and Dills uh, held down the fort and put out a rockin' angry chicken this past week covering all of the new decks that are coming out of Rise of Shadows, so I would highly recommend going and listening to that. Uh, 
unless I somehow get sick again, I will be back on Angry Chicken next week, be on the instance tomorrow. I've got R2-T2, which rumor has it, I may be resurrecting Embrace the Spoilers on the R2-T2 feed with Jocelyn oh, nice. Moffat, uh, at least for, well, now a six-week engagement, seeing as episode one has already happened and I have, was too sick to do an episode. But go check that out. And if you're already subscribed to the Embrace the Spoilers feed, I'll be throwing it on there as well. So go check that out. I really liked the first episode. I know some people were like, it's boring. I'm like, this is the, the meatiest table setting I've ever watched. I loved every freaking moment of that episode. Oh, congratulations. It was good. It was good. But that's going to wrap it up for this episode. We'll see you next week earlier than usual. But until then, good luck and have fun. Take care. <laughs>